We've got, well, thank you. We've got Dave Holmes in studio. How are you, Dave? I'm great, Tom. This is so exciting to have you here. Thank you for it's, coming. It's great to be here. Good morning. I got, I got here a little bit early, and I've just been sitting, staring at you as yeah. you talk to other people. Oh, that's, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, okay. But, no, I was just saying, like, I, I felt like I should have business. I don't, I don't like to be, like, looked at. Sure. When I'm oh, no, the whole point of doing this was able to, never you're to able be able to seen. tune me out. Yeah. The okay. whole point, yeah. The whole point, okay. everything I do, uh, basically, uh, is predicated on that no one looks at me. Yeah. At any point. Okay. Good. Do radio things, podcast things. Yeah. Uh, write. Sure. All these things. Nobody yeah. sees me. Right. I don't want people looking at me. Yeah. What's your attitude? I don't, I don't have the gene. You had the gene, and you I still have that. the gene. I don't. Well, first of all, you got the you got the the face for television. Oh, that's. Very I, I I I'm I'm kind of, I'm hanging on for this. Uh, I guess the closest thing is when you say when you think of uh, think of a Danny DeVito where he was like no 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 just hear me out hear me All out right. I'm not saying it look like Danny DeVito okay God it was I could be that lucky no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no but Danny DeVito yeah. when he started off he's like a weird weird dude weird looking little dude right and you're just like oh, that's a weird looking little dude. And he's acting against like Jeff Conaway uh, uh -huh, on a taxi uh -huh. and, and a Tony Danza. Yeah. And now Young, viral you, beauty. you move down the line, Danny DeVito, he kind of looks the same as he did in 1978. That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And first of all, Jeff Conaway is no longer with us. That's true, isn't he's it? He's gone. Yeah. God damn. And uh, Tony Danza looks like a disaster. All these other people. Does he really? Yeah, a little bit. They're, but they're all falling apart. But exactly. everybody's like, oh, Danny DeVito looks good. Yeah. Set the bar nice and low that's, real early. That's me. Okay. And that's what that I'm That is into. also me, actually. Oh, no. That was I've a disaster looked. in my 20s. Yeah, look. I had nowhere to go but up. You know, in that first taxi episode, he's in the booth, mm -hmm. like with it, like kind of overlooking the action. Mm -hmm. And the big joke at the end is that he comes that's out that and, he, then, he, and then he's, he's very he's small. Short, yeah. That yeah. that yeah. can't be no, good for the that's soul. That's not a great feeling when no. it's just like when he's like, and because he's a great actor, yeah. He's just kind of like, so what's the joke here? Yeah. Oh, the joke is you. Yeah. The joke is your body. You know who he hated? Riga. He was always like Riga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting cab number three, Riga. Mm -hmm. He did not like Riga. <laughs> um. Well, we have Dave Holmes here. Now, Dave, yes, you are an a writer and an author mm -hmm. and a podcaster, mm -hmm. and you, you used to be on the MTV. Yes, I did. Because you, you won a contest. No, no I you, didn't. you came up set. You came in second. Yeah, but then you did the Kobayashi Maru, as they say in Star Trek, where you rewrote the rules of the thing. <laughs> And they hired you. The, I, I've never actually heard that. What is the Kobayashi Maru? It's a thing where if it's like an unwinnable game, you rewrite the rules of the game. Oh. So you did that. That is kind of what I it did, is, I yeah. guess. Yeah, okay. you were just like, sure. oh, I didn't win the contest. Well, yeah. guess what? What if I just keep showing up? Yeah, you just kept showing up. It's yeah. like a Seinfeld episode. Honestly. It literally, there was a sign Like, yeah. you, you did that before Seinfeld did it. Right? Mm, no, maybe maybe, same, maybe you got it from Seinfeld. I don't. I I'm sure I watched. Yeah. yeah. No, that that really is the thing. I yeah. kind of just did <laughs> keep just, showing up, and they were like, showing. "Well, uh -huh. we have things for you to do." Yeah. So finally, yeah, like fine. Let this guy interview. Uh, yeah. the kid Savage Garden. Savage Garden. Whatever. <laughs> I heard there was a recent interview with the guy in Savage Garden. Just like he was like. I was uh, the guitarist of Savage Garden, and uh, or the singer was like, I was the singer of Savage Garden. I was one of the most recognizable people. I was like, well, okay, yeah, you're stretching a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, yeah. look, whatever your journey is, dude, I support you getting to the getting through it, right, and surviving and being healthy, all of it. Yeah, but just maybe Savage Garden. It's like, yeah, I've met him, and I would not, but. I would not be able to pick him up in the lineup <laughs> if I had to. Yeah. But he was like, I couldn't believe the guy was just like, I was one of the most famous people. It's like, you're in Savage. Like, the song was huge. <laughs> the songs were huge. They had like two huge songs. They right? had two big songs. Yeah. And, and probably a couple years of like being in rooms with people who know who you are yeah. and are excited about that yeah. fact. And then that, then you're like, that, this is the, what the whole world yeah. is. And he was the, like, everything yeah. is like this room. Yeah. And he was like, no, I had hair like Elvis Presley. And it's like, okay. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> know the songs, but he, he made so much money. 
He was one of those last people to sell mm -hmm. a whole lot of records mm -hmm. when records were sold. Yeah. He lives out here now and just has yeah. a lot of money. Doesn't well, need to talk at all. More power to him. God bless him. And you want to know the the thing that kind of proves my point? We what? keep saying he and him. We're not saying it. I'm not saying his actual yeah. name. Yeah. So yeah, the dude from Savage Garden. <laughs> and look, I'm not making fun of the guy. I'm yeah. just saying he may be in the article overstated his uh, yeah. stature. That's the nature That's of it, I'm though, saying. right? Yeah. Yeah. It just goes to your head. Even yeah. If you're man from Savage Garden. Even if you're the guy from Savage Garden. God bless him. And, uh, but you, you clawed your way onto MTV. I absolutely did. I refused to leave. <laughs> you refused to leave. Yeah. And. But from the 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 fun thing is you're you've proven through through years of 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 your your uh, work and presence and output that you are a true music fan. You were not just there yeah. to be on camera. You were there because yeah, you I loved guess. music. Yeah, sure. that's what started your career was a true passion for all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And the last ten years have tested that, but that's yeah. well. Yeah, look, we're all being tested. It, it, I try that hurdle. Mm -hmm. I can't tell one Drake song from another. I can't. Okay. Do you yeah. do Hurdle? No. I'll, I'll, I've done it a little bit, and I got really annoyed by it. Because it, yeah. it was just kind of like, I did it. I was like, this is so easy. Yeah. And then next day, I'm like, this is so hard. Exactly. Next it's day, this is so easy. This is nothing stupid. Nothing in between. It's nothing like, this between. one's so hard. This is stupid. Yeah. And I just realized I was just like, yeah, I'm not cut out for this yeah. game. But um, you did a podcast yes. that I loved you did it like end of last year like it was started late last year yep. airing and uh -huh. and it's it's called waiting for, for impact. impact yeah and it is a truly fascinating journey through something a subject matter that i was always wondering about it was true from the minute i saw that uh, Motown Philly video uh -huh. by by a boys to men. Uh -huh. For people who don't remember, right? It's Motown Philly, boys to men, and they would show all the groups that were in the in the it, East Coast family East Coast, in the, the fold, Michael Bivens the, East Coast yes. family. Yeah, and one of the groups they show is this group called Sudden Impact. Yeah, and you get a two second glimpse of them, mm -hmm. and then a generation. I feel. Was just like, yeah. Well, who are Sudden Impact? Exactly. When, and wh when's that gonna happen? So you like an Avatar sequel? Yeah, it's like, like an, it's it's hanging in the ether. Yeah, but you, you went, you answered the question. I did, and it I is tracked them down. Ten episodes, and I'm telling you this. Sometimes these ten episode things, they go like. It's fascinating, and then you're just kind of like, then that sag in the middle happens, and uh -huh. you're just kind of like, well, okay, they're vamping a little bit here. Yeah. It's not like that. This is a true, it's on. a study. It's a study of of, of setting, to, to make, uh, wanting to make music yeah. and versus wanting to be famous. It's yeah. a study of fame and art and talent and how the business of making music has nothing to do with the ability to make music. Right. And it really tracks the journey of these, these young guys mm -hmm. and the many trials and tribulations that they went through. And it's truly fascinating. And I thank think you very much. I, I was, it. yeah, I, it's a, it's a truly amazing podcast. Thank and you. it was I'm really happy with it. And I, I can't yeah, believe they you, let you me should, do it. Yeah, you should be very happy with it because you call it in the thing you you keep referring to it as like a what do you call it a, a Dave Holmes passion project. A Dave Holmes passion project, but the thing is, you you tie your own journey. Sure, you weave it through because you well because that's what podcasting is really. Yeah, but, essentially uh, just finding new ways to talk about yourself. Sure, no, you're trying to find ways to talk about yourself, but it was valid. You were not just shoehorning okay. yourself in. Good, Thanks. you were. A presence in, in you went through your own version of it, mm -hmm. yeah. So you could kind of see yeah. yourself in, right, the journey that these that these guys in the band Sudden Impact yeah. went on. And the the reason I called it a Dave Holmes Passion Project, mm -hmm. honestly, is that w w as I was writing the scripts, I had like, you know, made the signed the thing to do the ten episodes. Uh huh. And as I was writing, it, I was like, I have, 
I have maybe found the one thing that nobody else could possibly give a shit about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was like, this, this, I might've I might have reached the end of mm-hmm. my ability to tell a story. So I gave it that subtitle so that I kept having to write it. Okay. And then like when I was recording it, kept having to say it mm-hmm. to like trick myself back into being like, no, I, I, I care about this so I can, yeah. if I just keep going, perhaps yeah. someone else will care about it. You validated so I, I'm glad that's true. its own existence. Thanks. Um, hey, um, Brett, would you be able to put the air on? It is warm. It is. It's warm in here. You got yeah. it. Thank By the you, way, Brett. yeah, it's st- like wide open out on out on the boulevard. Like I just walked in. Oh no! It's... Anybody could just oh don't walk in off the street. Don't say that. Dave. I mean, they don't. The listeners don't, don't know oh, where no. well, we are, do they? I hope not. Okay. Now I hope not. But I'm just saying, yeah. lit anybody up off the street could. I I just let's no let's one stopped me. The, let's start locking the door. Okay. Start locking the door. We'll lock them just, all up. Just even a close, okay. even a closing of the door. All right, be, a closing might, might help. Good. All right, yeah. we'll close anyway, the door. Sure. Um, it is warm. It is warm. But I've got my beverages. How do you feel halfway through? Oh, I feel great. Yeah, I really do. I think okay. we're uh, we're on target. Great. And it's a way of uh, it was a, it was a gaudy, brash, stunty thing to do to. Sure. To really just do this and to do it big and to say like, because I have my paperback, yeah, and I w- but a, but the best show's here now and we have a studio finally and we can do what we want. We have a stage. We have nice. had, uh, John Vanderslice came in and played. Nick Thorburn from Islands played. Fantastic. We've had, we've just had. So we have other stuff coming up. The people are like music coming up through the next twelve hours. So many things. We had a, a Neil Young cover band, the Cinnamon Boys came in, and they did the, that was great. <laughs> it really has been so much fun, um, and it's and it's the best show West Coast now. It's it like is. when Give Me a Break just yeah. got up and moved to New York City. The yeah. whole cast. I love exciting. shows like isn't it when they relo- when you if you if you were watching a sitcom then as a kid because yeah. maybe they don't do it on sitcoms anymore maybe they do it on like an abc family show like maybe i feel like the type of show that was like just like a crappy network sitcom now yeah. they've forced to like abc family and yeah. like free form Nickelodeon. And these places yeah yeah um yeah, when the show moves it clearly means something is wrong foundationally yeah. in the whole thing where like Help. And I and look, I know Help I've talked us. about this on the air before, so please, if people are people like shaking their fist at, first of all, wait, get okay. I'm gonna say something I've said before. Okay, wait, wait, I've been talking for 12 hours straight. You can let me slide for a, a rerun here for a second. Um, when you watch, did you watch Laverne and Shirley? Did I? Yes. Yes. I, um, think about this, L- Laverne and Shirley. That was in Milwaukee. Yes. Famously. Famously, they lived in an apartment apartment together Mm -hmm. in the same building. Talk about an open door. Lenny and Squiggy walked right in. Hello. Yeah. It was always, hello, LeVon. Just slides in. Surely he'd lock a door in 1962. at some point. Whatever it was, yeah. Yeah. So they have to deal with Lenny and Squiggy bursting through their door all the time. Mm -hmm. Four or five years into the run, Laverne and Shirley say, we're moving to Los Angeles. Why not? They move 2,000 miles, you could say. That's a, good, that's mm-hmm. a solid 2,000-mile move from so. yeah. Wisconsin Something to like Los Angeles. Yeah, it's long. It's long. Who moves into their building? Lenny and Squiggy. Wouldn't you know? That's the creepiest thing I've ever heard. It is. It's not great. And is, is it – they continue to not lock their door. So oh. is that like – is that yeah. just for the feeling of home? Is that for the comforts of home? I I don't know. I guess they must have. Did uh, Carmine make the move? I think Was the big still? ragu did make the okay. move. Okay. Oh, uh, surely the parents stayed right. behind. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nobody the, wants the them dad, Mr. Los Angeles. Yeah. 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 He had to move his pizza parlor around yeah. here. Outlived his usefulness. He was always, oh boy. And so it's funny when you see the things, so like, oh boy. and then like I watch it, it's like, yeah, that guy's probably like six years younger than I am right now. Oh my now. God. Like that's the creepiest thing when oh suddenly, oh my God. When these people who I thought were like the oldest people ever, yeah. and then suddenly I'm like, well, they were kind of where I'm at right now, if not yeah. younger. Season one of the Mary Tyler Moore show, uh-huh. Lou Grant, yeah. Ed Asner, is yeah. 38. 38. 38. And in my mind, he's just like, what is he, 67? He yeah. Was like, yeah. Yeah. 38. And he's just like, Ugh. 
like that's <gasps> like, that Excuse is me. the most that is horrifying. Isn't that horrifying? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you wish I hadn't said that? Yeah, it's I really absolute do. truth. The one that gets me is when people would say that like um Wilford Brimley yeah. was the same age that like Tom Cruise. Yeah. Like Wilford Brimley in Cocoon mm-hmm. was the same age that like Tom Cruise did Mission Impossible Six, something like that. Yeah, so, like, he's hanging off a plane. Yeah, I think he was like fifty one. Yeah, and then Wilford Brimley's walking around like, well, you know, <laughs> it's like, like, well, first of all, it's the right thing to do. That might be on Wilford Brimley. He might want to. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a different time. Tighten it up a little it was a bit different there. Time. He's yeah, like, uh, Wilford, you're falling apart. Did you did you see Top Gun Maverick? I did not. Okay. Can I recommend seeing it? Yeah, but do it do it in 4DX. Okay. Have you have you been, experienced a 4DX? I have never movie? been in the 4D. I know that's it's the, the the dumbest fucking thing in the world. <laughs> the it's chair the dumbest, that shakes. The chair that shakes. It's if it's raining in a scene, water spits at you from in front of you, which is not what no, rain I don't like that. is. That's, um... When there's a fist, like if somebody gets punched in the face, you get poked in the back. There's no reason. Uh, in Top Gun Maverick, there's a scene that takes place in like a wintry forest, fake snow. It's it is so stupid, that and I sounds... love it so much. No, I get the appeal. It's you get like it. it's like um, it's like an amusement park, but with but, a very low budget. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's just like like that, <laughs> the, just shake. Yeah, <sighs> it's it's more it's more a nuisance than okay, anything. Yeah. But then every now and then it's like, oh, there's oh look, that was lightning. Is there a point you can just go like, I get it. <laughs> you should. You shut the chair off. You should. Yeah. At the beginning of the screen that we went to, uh, as the lights were going down, a woman in the back row went, I feel the need. And nobody did the nobody rest of the line. Yeah. And I, I, I couldn't stop thinking about her for the entire rest of the And line. she was expecting the theater to go, the oh, need spare. for speed. Yeah, yeah, but no, we did not. We did not indulge her. That brings to mind a story. When I was a kid, I went to see... Uh, Return of the Jedi opening sure. day. Oh, of course, me too. And it was one of those. It was like I think they all came out in May. Yep. And they were like, so it's a Friday, or it was either Wednesday or Friday. Whenever it opened, I'm at the theater first day, and it's all kids. Of course, at the theater, this showing was like a 1 p.m. show, all kids, and like one <laughs> dude by himself who clearly. Had everything riding on this movie. Of course. And he's sitting up front. I, was, I can remember this as if it happened yesterday. He's in the theater. <laughs> Credit comes up like a long, long time ago in a galaxy. And the kids in the theater go, a long, long, they start reading, <laughs> a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far. He gets up, he turns to the audience, he goes, shut up. <laughs> Like, he was not going to have this ruined. He's like, I've been waiting three years for this. Oh, God. I've been waiting three years for this. Oh, damn it. This place is filled with kids. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a kid's movie. It is it's for, for children. kids. Yeah, literally for children. You're the, the, you're, you're the oddball here. The last third of it is yeah. teddy, teddy bears. bears. <laughs> teddy bears running around throwing rocks <laughs> at robots. <laughs> like, yeah. But I just remember this guy, like, he turned. He had his fist. Shut oh. up! You learned so much about life yeah, in I just that moment. This poor guy. Yeah, is all he's got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it felt like when you hear, it's like one of the most obnoxious things is when like you're like a Paul, like Paul Stanley will be just like, like, you know, in Kiss, we come to your town, and we do a show. We try to help let people forget about their problems because they have their lives. They're working these jobs and. It, like it's like talking as if everybody's just like in the salt mines. Yeah, it's just like like as if oh, life was just this endless hell. But <laughs> we got that that respite, that two hour respite Star when Kiss comes. came through mm-hmm. and made us feel good for just two small hours, <laughs> and then we're back to work again. Like this, like this inflated sense this of him, piteous like, self delusion. Yeah. And we just want to give people a chance to forget <laughs> their lives. For just two hours, they forget all their problems. And there are people who take Kiss much too seriously. Yeah. Surely. Oh, no, that now is... Uh, we're in an age now where people have more or less 
they don't let go of the thing that they're supposed to let go of at a point. No. Go like wrestling. Yeah, it's yours now. <laughs> Take it, kids. Yeah. Kids, I had my Run fun along. with wrestling. Yeah, it's yours now. They're like, no. Yeah, wrestling's mine. Yeah, I'm not letting go. Yeah, Disneyland. Disneyland. Yeah, uh, I do shows sometimes with uh, with my friend Scott Gimple, who was the showrunner of The Walking Dead for a while. Uh-huh. And anytime, oh, and then also sometimes just like on Twitter, we'll respond to something that the other said. And anytime I am uh, I am tagged on anything that he says or does, mm-hmm. and this is going on five years now. Yeah, you killed Carl. How dare how dare you kill Carl? Yeah, it's, like, like, it's a. Well, Carl doesn't exist. Carl doesn't exist. Yeah. The show is about zombies who eat Kill. eat people. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the so point like, of the... Yeah. Your favorite character is going to get ate yeah. up at Pe- some point. People got to go at some people point. Gotta go. Otherwise, you're not going to care about this. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. <laughs> Where you're just like, nah, they'll be fine. Yeah. That was the first thing I was ever snobby about was the Dukes of Hazard. You were? Yeah. When Kids uh, in, my, uh, in my neighborhood liked it, and I was like, I feel okay, I feel you, legitimate pity for you. You were just like, this is stupid. This is stupid. I think Kiss might have been the first thing I felt like that, where I was just yeah. like, this is dumb. <laughs> I was like, low-key scared of Kiss. Yeah. Oh, I was definitely Kiss. scared of Kiss. Okay. I was so scared of so many, like, if, like, a, there were, like, records that scared me. I would hear, oh, like... Yeah. Like even, like things that shouldn't have scared me. Like there's like an electric like orchestra where they had like weird synthesizers and stuff. Uh-huh. I'm just, oh, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah, something's happening. Like, oh, this is not good. Something's happening. I'm scared. Rush. There were some Rush. Yeah. songs that, just that like, were off putting. Spooky. Yeah, yeah. The idea of Ozzy Osbourne was, was yeah. terrifying to me. Absolutely. Was there was a there was a story that made its way around our little subdivision that Ozzy Osbourne was. This was around the time of the eating the bat or eating mm-hmm. whatever yeah. it was. Um, that they were they were playing a show and the crowd was going crazy and Ozzy stopped it and he brought out a puppy yeah, and he uh, threw yeah. the puppy out into the crowd and he was like, we will not play another note until yeah. that puppy is dead. Until torn apart by yeah. the crowd. And I believed it. I yeah. believed it. I was like, that is, that's Ozzy behavior. He's evil. Yeah. You're just like, and he's unpredictable. This guy's killing dogs at his show. Yeah. <laughs> we got to stop this. <laughs> and then you just realize this guy's just like, yeah. He's like, I just want to do the show and get out of Tampa. <laughs> like, he just wants to, he doesn't care if the audience tears a dog apart or not. Like, no, for my concert to be successful, there must be dead animals. <laughs> Ozzy's meanwhile just like, how much, how would you do with the merch tonight? Oh, good. How much? $16 a, a head. Well, wow, that's yeah. a solid night. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. now he's just a weird, doddering old man. Yeah. Now, God Dave. Bless. You wrote a book. Yes, I did. It was the hardest thing ever, wasn't it? Wasn't it hard? Yeah, it was. To like I, get, yeah, truly to get to the finish line on it. Yeah, and to like turn it from a series of ideas into a thing. Into a thing. Yeah. Yes. And you want to talk about God? The internal "Who cares?" chorus Ooh. singing at every minute. I remember. Holy cow! I remember writing this book and saying to myself. Wait, I I shouldn't be writing this book until I have done something. Yeah. Cuz then I can say who the my like I did this thing. Yeah. And now here's my story. Uh-huh. It's like, wait, I don't think I did a thing yet. Well, but it's that's how I felt. And when sure, you're when you're in it, it's the most it was agonizing. Yeah. I would drive around at night and be like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. I uh I'm turning my saddest moments into somebody else's comedy Mm -hmm. and i was like i'm just turning my life into entertainment my lowest points are now just meant to be like ha 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 that's funny yeah that was my biggest fear working on it well but that's the objective though right like not to make them good but but to make sure i was not selling myself out okay in a way like that was the balance yeah don't sell myself out with it right write the book be true to the stories and be true to myself and make it fun and entertaining as much as possible. Yeah. But also to not just be like, I'm so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to be a clown. Yeah. That's but, exact. That was the line. Yeah. I don't want to be you, a buffoon. But it's to, to take defeats and, mm-hmm. and, and humiliating moments or whatever and mm-hmm. turn them into something that is funny. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. And that, you know, somebody else can, you know, see themselves in and feel better about. Yes. Well, you know, that was the that was the side of 
the the line I wanted to land on yeah. where it's like, oh, it's about uh, connecting. And yeah. It's about the like even if everybody's story is different, there's the universal threads that run through so much of everybody's story. And right. I wanted to be on that, but I just didn't want to just be like, like, man, I didn't get paid that much to do this. Yeah. And now I have cashed out my entire existence sure. for like not a lot of money. Yeah. And now you gotta write a whole new one hour yeah. special, as it were. Exactly. Yeah. How how did you how did you muscle through it? Did you just I just made Sure, I was feeling good about it when I looked back on stuff and just made sure I could kind of look myself in the mirror with with parts of it that I yeah. just didn't feel uh, like I was. It's just like an innate compass yeah. with it where I'm just like, no, nah, this is too much. I'm not. This is making me kind of clowny, clowning uh-huh. on myself. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of striking the balance. But that yeah. was such a tricky part of it. And, yeah, anybody who's doing something like this, just you're allowed to um you're allowed to to take care of yourself right. in the process, I guess I would say. Yeah. I think for anybody. But you wanna tell the stories and and go to places that you might you don't want to cop out with that stuff yeah. and just make it a like a breezy collection of just you know, twelve wacky stories. Because yeah. then that would have been a that would have I would have felt just as bad about that in a different way right because yeah it's just a hard thing because you you uh you you really uh i hate that i went there no, it's okay but yeah it's but okay. it's like you went you went deeper it's okay and it's just a fun thing went there's fun. thank i appreciate it no it, it just didn't i went f- for it you went for it i hate when there's certain phrases that i've never said before and uh-huh. when i hear them come out of my mouth i'm just like yeah that's why i don't say that phrase. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah Feels weird in it the mouth. Feels not not good coming out of my mouth. Yeah, for uh, the thing that saved me was the idea of like, um, like mentally telling one person. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. instead of thinking about like some audience that you don't know who they are, mm-hmm. and be like, tell John. Yeah, just tell John this story because yeah. he won't let you debase yourself, mm-hmm. and he likes your stories. Yes, and you know how to make him laugh, mm-hmm. and you know how to involve him emotionally. Mm-hmm. So just do that. That Absolutely. would be that was my way to quiet the who cares chorus. Yes, no, I head. had a I had a, a like a small group of people that I trusted with the stuff, and I just knew right. they were they were tracking the stuff uh, for my best sense of self. Or yeah, whatever called. they they had my best interest in yeah. mind. Um. So what are you what are you up to lately? What's what's uh what's going on in the world of Dave Holmes? Um, I am, uh, I am currently working on a documentary about stand up comedy. I'm not I'm not like producing or whatever. I'm okay. just like researching. Do you know uh-huh. Paige Hurwitz? Sorry, Paige Hurwitz. She's a uh, I don't comedian and producer and whatever. She uh, there's this whatever. It's a it's a documentary about uh, stand up comedy. So I'm, okay. I'm knee deep in research on. The history okay. of stand-up comedy. Right now, we're in the '80s with Andrew Dice Clay and sure. Eddie Murphy starting his movie yeah. with eight minutes of of AIDS just on hate the lip. speech. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, yes. Yeah, so that's that's uplifting. It is funny when it's just like, "Hey, it was the time." It's like, mm, no, yeah, it, this stuff sucked then too. Yeah, it was it was gross. Yeah. And and what's f- way grosser is the crowd shots because like because the material uh, is really bad. Yeah, yeah, but then it's and I remember seeing it. You like. See the crowd, they're like, yeah, yeah. like doing the this, yeah. which, you know. Like, like they're finally liberated. Yeah, with yeah. This. Yeah, no, it, it was Just pretty. white and gleeful and yeah. gross. That whole thing about, it was the time. And it's just like, well, you can also, sure, yes, sure, of yeah. course. Things progress. Yeah. Things get better. Yeah, Somebody made it not the time, and yeah. it, it was not you. You didn't yeah. do that. You kept no. it the time. You kept it, yeah. Yeah. There was a reason why it was the time. It's because you were screaming Mm -hmm. when, when uh, Eddie Murphy basically he would have been if he was on Twitter saying these things he would have had his account suspended Mm -hmm. for misinformation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It um, yeah. There was a great moment when I was listening to satellite radio when like they put like it was like I was listening to one of the comedy things and it was like Eddie Murphy and it was like. F, F's revisited as if like he's coming back. Like I got more. Oh God, I got more. Like revisited. Yeah. <laughs> like just like here's <laughs> round another two. thing. Yeah. Oh, but I didn't. Yeah. The last time I didn't get it. I didn't get it all out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Come to think of it. Yeah. And nothing. Nothing what a, or fresh. Yeah. You, you listen to the, the comedy channels on the satellite radio? Uh, yeah, I do sure. sometimes. And it's... Okay. Uh, it can be a bit uh, uh, challenging. Sure can. Yeah, but then sure I, can. I like to uh, listen to volume, wow. which is the one I can't get enough of because it's. Uh, look, I'm a, I'm a trunk head. I'm an Eddie okay. trunk head. I, uh-huh. uh, I want to hear what's going on with the guys from Rat. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and me too. Just, what I want more than anything is I want two white guys in their mid to late sixties mm-hmm. just yelling about Carmine apiece. That's what I want. I want it to be like mm-hmm. sports talk radio, yeah, but, but about about yeah. music for the for about a thing that can't be quantified at yeah, all. The, an artistic the, thing. The thing that made me run toward music, yes, was that at any given point, the best band could have only put a single out in a run of a thousand copies. Mm-hmm. That was the whole point of music. It wasn't stats. Right. And then for them to just turn it into stats, yeah. it's just like, well, there goes the fun in yeah. music. Thank yeah. you for killing yeah. the the purity and the... Oh, there's now a hall of fame to aspire to? Yeah. And to yell about who's in and who's yeah. not? Yeah, great. Um, you know, that's going away, volume. It is. Mm-hmm. Oh, As okay. of uh, August 1st. Really? Yep. It will uh, exist as an app, I am, uh, I am told. But yeah, it's going away. Yeah, somehow just yelling about music and never playing it. They yeah. never spent the extra money play, no, to play can, more not, than not 10 license, seconds of a song. They can only play like... Yeah. So yeah. yeah, let's... Why don't you tell me... Why don't you describe a sound to me angrily? I'll listen all day yeah. while I'm in traffic. Right? <laughs> I can't believe volume's going on. Volume yeah. on satellite radio. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's, like, like, it's it's, I like you drop the news on me now, and it's kind of like, wow, okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm just kind of like, yep. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I that's fine. listen to this. I hate listening to this thing. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm okay saying goodbye to that. Yeah. It was yeah. a whole station devoted to my favorite thing in the world, and it never appealed to me for a moment. No. It was always, uh, yeah. I feel bad. I'm sorry yeah. to anyone who no, worked no. there. Yeah, I'm sorry for anybody employed there, but... Yeah. Uh, which includes me, by the way. You were, yeah. Well, I'm sorry for you. Then. No, not a volume. I okay. uh, I do weekends on the spectrum. Okay. Play me some, uh, you know, some Mumford and Sons. Sure. Some, no. Uh, hosier. Yeah. When that one guy in Mumford and Sons was like doing all that, uh, when he quit the band because like yeah. he said things, I was just like, why does this guy get off so easy? We yeah. got to, like, he, he's got to stop. He, he's allowed to stop listening to Mumford and Sons right exactly. now. Exactly. Exactly. We got to still listen to them. We're like he's got a podcast coming out. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's hard. Yeah. The Blaze. He's probably mm-hmm. on the Blaze. Um, I bet he's on the Blaze. Yeah. <laughs> white guys yelling. Just screaming. <laughs> so, so you have the. Excuse you're, me. You're working on the documentary. We're working on a documentary. Working at Esquire. I'm, you know, doing five million things. Well, you do as you must. As you must. And I got to say the, again, the podcast. Waiting for impact. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get enough of it. Thank you very I much. I loved it. I was Thank so, you very much. Yeah, truly amazing, Thank and a much. real fun adventure, and the twists and turns in it. Now, did you Ooh. ever? Did you? Ever, I know Michael Bivens is not a participant in yeah. the in the podcast. No. What was the What was the reality of that? Was he just not interested? He just was not interested. We tried three different ways to get a hold of him, mm-hmm. and I think you know whatever. I'm sure it's somebody who has been a success probably doesn't want to dwell on something that was a failure. And, and, you know, I was, I was hoping that maybe he would hear it or someone in his orbit would have heard it sure. and said to him, you know, it's, you know, you're not a monster in this story. Yeah, no, it's, story. it's a pretty, it's a, it's an so, incredibly balanced portrait of I, it. Nobody's the bad guy in this thing. It's right. just the forces of right. the industry yeah. are the reality of it. Right. But there's no there's no mustache twirling in no. it, right? So yeah. But there's I would I would love to speak to him still because there have been developments with okay. sudden impact since. Okay. And you know we could we could get you know some bonus episodes out of That'd it, be an epilogue. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would love to speak to him for it, but uh, so far so far yeah. no luck. Well, let's hope let's hope somebody tells him that they listen to it, yeah. and that it's cool, yeah, and that he it's a safe. Space, it's a safe space. Anybody to... in Bivens' orbit listening, just yeah. reach out. Yeah, Tell them it's okay. It's safe. 
That's amazing. Well, Dave, I appreciate you swinging by. My this God, so much my fun. pleasure. It's great. Congratulations. Thank Welcome you. to the West Coast. Yes, I love it. The so pizza is also no, not great. It's not. Right look, it's, 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 okay, you're right. Yeah. Also, speaking of books, I loved yours and I wish that Marshall Crenshaw was nicer to you. Oh, I just do. Well, it's, I pre, Dave, I appreciate I that. I see his point of view, but he could have been more oh, courteous. No, look, it was incredibly stupid what I did. But, I mean, he could but, also just give you like a, not now. When you see a child, I was a child. Yeah. Holding All the more tick, reason. Holding t- <laughs> All the more reason. And he looked, he's like, I'm not signing that now. Just be nice. Be just, yeah. Yeah. No, that was, yeah. The wounds, sometimes they just don't heal. No, I get it. I get yeah. it. You got to, you got to, as Carrie Fisher says, you got to turn your broken heart into art or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Something like that. Well, I'll something quippy. Something, like, yeah, something rhymey. Quippy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, pre- this is great. You're great. You're great. And I hope. Enjoy you- the next 11 something hours. Okay. Yeah. This is so much fun. Thank you for, for making the, uh, for swinging by the studio. My pleasure. And good morning. Good morning to you. Yes. Thank you. And I'm going to figure out, I have to figure out, we have a, what do I get? A, I don't know what I'm doing. The, what I can feel, do? I can feel the, I can feel the little break starting to happen with reality Uh-oh. a little okay. bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Well, that's um, what you're, you know. It's fine. That's what you came for. Yeah, exactly. What is what people want to see. They want to see. see in here. They want to see me fall a apart in front break. of them. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to. I'll play another song. I stopped saying I'll play another record. I kept saying I'll play another record. I you know, don't say that sometimes too. It hasn't I, been a record in forever. No, they give me everybody gives me the business because they say record. I'm gonna play something by. Let's play something by uh, our friends in the band Swearin'. They